Good. Oh, I just had the most fucking beautiful workout. Yeah. With with the misses, brother. Show the what a dig or two, brother. I don't. I don't think the audience wants to know about your workouts with the misses, eh? All right. First and foremost, keep my missus's naked body out your mouth, okay? Because it was clothed and there was a punching bag, and she wasn't the punching bag. There was an actual yeah, I hope bag. Not, bro. I hope we, not. We were both punching the bag, which was not another person. It, I don't know. Deep inside the fluff, there might have been like a, a little dude, but <laughs> just feeling <laughs> grateful, feeling thankful. I see you looking fucking ripped. You look like you're looking as ripped as like a a cheap drums. Like a, have you seen a cheap chicken wing? Like a chicken wing with no meat on it. <laughs> that that makes me feel so awesome about myself. Yeah, hundred percent. You look like a cheap chicken wing with a beard. <laughs> but the hundred days is is doing its thing. I mean, what day are you on now? Uh, day 80, I've changed up the program to be mainly cardio-based program, which is annihilating my uh, metabolism system at the moment. I have dropped two kilos in the space of five days because I've kept my heart rate, average heart rate at about 147 through the duration of about a, uh, an hour 40. And just remind the listeners, guys, this is one of the most thought out people on the planet. <clears throat> this dude started a fucking... A hundred day... What? Explain it to the dudes because it's fucking mad. Yeah, so it initially came about about four years ago um, where you program a hundred days to do a thousand reps and about a five kilometer run for a hundred days. So I did that for two years consecutively, but I got kind of bored with the same program. So it'd be you do 10, uh, 10 exercises uh, for a hundred reps each and you can do however many sets you want you can do as uh four sets of 25 you can do three sets of 34 you can do two sets of 50 etc etc et you can break it out as much as you want to be but the, the ideal thing is to finish off a thousand reps um and five kilometer run for those two two consecutive and then last year i changed it up between doing a 50 50 split um on different exercises but this year i did something completely different uh which was for the first uh, one to 25 days was the previous workout where you do the thousand reps, five kilometer run, but I broke my toe. So I had to do rowing instead. So I did the rowing instead for five kilometers. Um, so I did a thousand reps and, and rowing for five kilometers every single day. Um, and this year I have no break days. So it's hundred days consecutively. Whereas before I would take a Sunday, maybe a Monday off to recover. So this, so this this time it's about 100 days consecutively. Um, so, and then so, so back to this program. So once 25 was 1,000 reps and five kilometer road due to my toe being broken. After 25 days, I split it to three sets of 34 and a whole different range of exercises, but focusing on total um, full body exercising. And then um, I did... 2.5k um, row and 2.5k run as much as I could allow my toe to do it. Then uh, day 50 to day 75 was two sets of 50 uh, with once again a 2.5 kilometer row and 2.5 kilometer run. Now it's day um, 75 to 100 where I'm doing 10 sets to 10 exercises followed by um, you begin your row for you you row. Well, you have to row 500 meters in two minutes when you start your set, do the set, and then after the set, you run uh, 500 meters under two minutes. And you do that 10 times. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> ah, guys, you saw... Sorry, sorry. sorry, sorry. No, no, let me explain something to you, right? That's, that's what the time you have on your hands when unemployment is not a problem in your country. Like you just you just don't know what to do. You know, there's just fuck, man. Like, this, this, what what are we gonna do? Hey, I know. Let me fucking ramp the lactic acid in my body to such a level that I start to change pigmentation, and that's <laughs> that's how I have fun. But I mean, guys, in all honesty, a major thing that Josh mentioned there, um, <clears throat> inside all of the fucking like flexing on everyone, I'm better than you. I'm better than you. I'm better than you. <laughs> He mentioned that 
when the workout started getting bored, when he started getting bored of the workout, he changed it, which is the most important thing. <clears throat> I can't emphasize this enough to people. And we'll look at like the benefits of exercise, but every single person has worked out once in their life or, or done some form of physical activity that they enjoyed. So it may not be sitting lifting weights. It may not be going on a 5K run. But probably in, in school, you used, to play, you used to play cricket, you know? Mm. So join an action cricket team or you used to play football. Join an indoor soccer team. Um, <clears throat> you used to kickbox, martial arts, all of that type of stuff. Find something that you enjoy doing. Something that you almost you forget that you're doing it. You're not like, oh, I need to stop. You push yourself because you're still enjoying it. And after it's done, you're like, yo, holy shit. You know? <clears throat> Everyone has to find something like that. You have to find something like that. I mean, w besides the, the torture and the, the, just the paces you've put your body through, what is the end result? So how has this made you a better, a better Joshua? How has this made you a better Joshua? That's, that's a good question because I, at, from day 33, day 52, and I think day 74, I said to myself, why am I doing this? What, what, is the, what is the end goal here? Like, what is the purpose of doing this? And you know what? There is no purpose for me. It's mainly you have um, described a goal in your mind, and in order to achieve it, you have to stay diligently cons consistent at your endeavor to achieve the outcome. And whether that outcome is having a more body or whatever, that doesn't matter to me, but it's, uh, it's the progressive consistency to keep going. Mm. I think it's, it's the overall benefit that comes when you set a goal and achieve it no matter what. You don't look at it as an exercise. It is a goal. It is non-negotiable. It is as non-negotiable as taking a shit. Like, it's non-negotiable <laughs> kind of exactly. thing. Special, man. Special. So what's on the docket this week, Josh? The uh, Sam Altman, yeah. um, CEO of OpenAI, has been relegated um, by other people and then got rehired by Microsoft, which is a fascinating story. That's um, crazy. That's <laughs> so crazy, dude. <laughs> and then obviously, um, I don't know if you heard about this, but Argentinian, um, Argentina has elected a Javier Mille, which is a right wing libertarian in Europe for the first but, time. So it's, 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 it's a new development for Europe. So we'll see it. Oh, it's you're so cute. In you're South America. <laughs> my bad. I, my geography was all fucked up. Holy shit. That was like I, the most cause, privileged cause I, thing I've ever seen you do. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I, I had Greece on the mind. So I, I recall something um, happened with uh, uh, Greece. Yeah. Um, and we know, and, we all know they, how Greeks and Argentina is basically the same people. You know, <laughs> it's the one nation uses more Greece in their head. Yeah, their <laughs> I, I, I agree. It was the first time that I did that privilege thing. Okay, my bad. My bad. Oh, That's, some wild shit with Sab Altman. And then it's like a fucking rapper fresh, dude. Snoop Dogg, stop smoking weed, man. What? Snoop Dogg, stop smoking weed. P. Diddy is accused of raping Cassie. Young Thug is about to go to jail forever. And they're about to use, like, the lyrics from his songs to prosecute him. <laughs> the other thing we should mention is, th is that um, SpaceX is um, large um, rocket has been able to launch and land perfectly with a 33 Raptor engines on it. It's the largest rocket ever ever made, bro. If you guys have ever seen the, the footage that came out here, it's a highly impressive feat. And I, you know, it's, it's just an amazing thing to watch. Chocolate stuff! <laughs> uh, I'm the OG, man. Medsa, welcome to the OG session. Thank you all so much for joining us. Of course, if you are new here, please subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you're notified whenever we drop new content. Of course, like the video if you like him. Share him with your friends and family. And um, we'll try to get through this one without mentioning Israel and uh, Beth. <laughs>
Oh, some prayers of the people of Palestine. I really, really love you. Sam motherfucking Altman. <clears throat> so this was wild, guys. This was like out of the blue. I like it was one of those like I didn't I was I didn't even really pay attention to the firing. I heard of the hiring. And I was like, what? When did dude get fired? <laughs> Sam Altman and Greg Brockman, co-founders of OpenAI, have been hired by Microsoft to lead the new advanced AI research team. This obviously moves for a series of uh, intense discussions after OpenAI's board unexpectedly dismissed Altman, which led to protests and resignations from many of the OpenAI members. Um, Altman will serve as a chief executive of new group within Microsoft. The team will also include other former OpenAI AI Top talents like uh, Sismon uh, Sidor, which is the guy that initially Elon Musk hired and paid $40 million into OpenAI originally, uh, Jacob and a couple of other guys. Um, the CEO of Microsoft expressed the commitment to provide the resources necessary for the success and the endeavor. Um, the strategic acquisition by Microsoft is seen as a reinforcement competitive edge in the AI sector. But it was like a series of Silicon Valley, like distraught lawyer vibe. You know, what, what was that lawyer series that everybody used to watch? Suits. Suits. You know? But, yeah. So look at it this way, right? And just, just for some context for some dudes. Of course, Sam Altman, one of the founders of OpenAI. They're, of course, the creators and custodians of ChatGPT, which might be in some fucking big shit for the first time in his young career. Um, <clears throat> Altman's been at the forefront of the AI discussion. He's had various appearances in Congress and AI conferences, etc., where he's basically encouraging and he's urging regulators to regulate AI. Now, in the same breath, he's apparently pushing, like, unrealistic goals as far as the development of AI... And the board of OpenAI allegedly <clears throat> had concerns with regards to the pace that he wished to advance, um, basically, ChatGPT, ChatGPT's AI model. And I guess what gave them even colder feet was the fact that he was doing what most tech dudes do, which is not really tell you how. Like, <laughs> it's like, okay, now we're going to do it. You know, we're going we're to we're have chat GPT 9 by Christmas. Chat GPT 9 is going to be released. Sam, aren't we moving a bit fast? No, it's just, okay. Elon just launched Croc. All right. He just dropped Croc. We need to get going. Okay, Sam. Um, just so me and the board members can be at ease. Do you mind just giving us access to some of the codes so we can see exactly well, how you're speeding this up? And he was blue ticking them allegedly with uh, <laughs> the details. Allegedly. So, this again, two sides to every fucking story. All of a sudden, the board ousts him, which is quite hilarious because he and ChatGPT are pretty much like boom. Apparently, according to OpenAI's chief of operating um, officer of operations, has an internal member, member that has. That the decision was due uh, was not due to any malfeasance or issues related to financial business safety or security practices, but was a breakdown in communication between Altman and the board. Yeah, and it was because, <clears throat> but this is where it gets weird when you no longer own your own company. You know what I'm saying? People need to remember when you give people equity and you start selling parts to people, you no longer own the whole thing. So you've got to let you got to keep some people in the know, and the breakdown in communication I think took place. Of course, he was rubbing with with the board members the wrong way. Again, it's you've got board members and a Silicon Valley tech entrepreneur. Remember, Elon Musk is a tech entrepreneur. Um, his board fucking fired him from Tesla, <laughs> you know. So there's a certain point where a company. Um, either just needs to now become a company because, hey, this thing's now too big for it to be a little plaything, or they just basically don't align. The, the board basically becomes disillusioned with the tech entrepreneur because this person's fucking like 10 steps ahead. They're not thinking about 
day to day stupid no nah, dude i'm i'm in 2030 right now where are you guys and it can probably be a bit frustrating if you're constantly required to explain what you're doing when you are the king of the shit <laughs> you know i mean it's 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 like <clears throat> and in this case again we're just dealing with the first part which is where you got fired Three days later, he gets hired by Microsoft in a crazy position. Again, um, when you're hiring in the, at this level, you're not hiring one dude. You're hiring teams. So OpenAI is losing Altman and his team and their fucking knowledge. Yes, OpenAI is probably going to be able to keep the patents and all of that shit, which is odd because it is called OpenAI. Ask Elon Musk about that. But anyways, maybe, maybe it's a little bit of like poetic justice. Sam Altman went completely against the grain of the original vision and eventually got kicked out of the company. But here's this thing. Microsoft is one of the largest investors in open AI. And I think here's where Microsoft made the most gangster move ever. <laughs> they literally hired him and his team basically to help Microsoft probably create a bigger open AI. And the cool thing with this is, and we'll have to look at the agreements as far as patents and how the relationship between Microsoft and OpenAI, but if I'm not mistaken, the investment that Microsoft made wasn't really a cash investment. It was more allowing OpenAI to use their servers for free so that OpenAI has the hardware capacity in order to develop what they have developed. So Microsoft fucking huge. That was the catch of the game. Because imagine if Altman ends up teaming up with Musk again at Grok. Microsoft is even, you see, Microsoft is dead as we speak, right? They, their hardware sales are pop. Microsoft's surviving on like inches of software. Now they're trying to find a network because weirdly with Apple be creating their own little ecosystem, Microsoft has basically had to disband theirs and there's no longer value in Microsoft's ecosystem. So, <clears throat> mm. massive, massive hire what you, from Microsoft. Shout out to Microsoft. Because I think that was the most gangster fucking move, dude. What do you think the salary was? Fuck! That, now, that's the thing. Because it's like Tesla filed Elon Musk. Um, so, Mercedes hired him. It's like, okay, what are you paying him? <laughs> <laughs> like, what is is he on the balance sheet as like a fucking entity on the budget? Like he's on the trial balance because you're paying him like three billion dollars a fucking year. It's got to be some heavy agreement, dude. But it's definitely laden with equity, and I think it's laden with like, you know what, Sam? We're gonna leave you alone, okay? <laughs> it's gonna be like the good old days. Gonna we we'll just give you a whole. We're just gonna give you fucking hundred billion dollars. And we're going to leave you alone. All right. Mm. We're going to leave you alone. And hopefully you don't destroy the world. Okay. Well, Even yeah, if everyone you do. Must everyone must remember that um, ChatGPT was the fastest downloaded or subscribed application web-based form ever. What? Holy yeah. shit. Ever. And, I mean, now they've had, to, they've had to pause um, orders, if I'm not mistaken. That was that was a couple of months ago. They had some flags on on the, on the subscribers, but it was the fastest subscription to a site web based app mm. ever known in existence. So, wrapping up, we're literally at a tipping point. Fastest web based thing ever, downloaded and bought by a whole lot of people, to the point where in order to let development catch up with the product, you need to hold off on some orders. Then now there's like a, <clears throat> still a hold, there's no new people being taken on, I guess due to server capacity probably, because again, it's the most downloaded thing on fucking earth, okay? It's, it's, it's finite, it can only handle so much. Like the cloud is actually a fucking warehouse with physical hard drives, SD cards basically. So everything has its limits. But tipping point, because whilst ChatGPT fucking went zero to 100, dude, fucking quick, 
Now they're chilling at 120. And now they're, they're in cruise control. And we know whenever you get comfortable, that's when motherfuckers like Elon Musk just kick you off the fucking... They kick you off the side of the earth, dude. In this period, if Musk gets it right as far as Grok and is able to, for example, by the time... Best case scenario, by the time ChatGPT is ready to start taking new orders, Grok is ready to start taking orders. It's going to be a fucking showdown, dude. It's, it's I, think, <laughs> I, I, I think it might be, but um, I think it's the novelty is worn off because there's, there's so much artificial intelligence web-based platforms available nowadays. So I think it will oh, yeah. take a, a lot longer. But I do like the fact that... Um, Elon Musk has a humor factor to everything he does and having <laughs> um, a section on Grok that can give you funny answers instead of serious whatever answers is quite a good little feature. Yeah, it's, it it's differentiates it, um, end of the day. <clears throat> and through that differentiation, of course, it, it adds a new dynamic to AI that... Um, Maybe now, it's not the next level, but it's like 1.1. So like AI 1 is, is sentient for arguments. AI 1.1 is got a sense, sense of humor. But <clears throat> look at it this way. Many AI pl platforms out there right now, right? Fuck, every ad you hear, see, AI, AI, actually machine learning most of them, and they're just fucking false advertising. But what you'll find with a lot of them is, <clears throat> just like with... Search engines, guys. Google is the, the boss search engine. It's the king of search engines. So you'll find that 99% of alternate search engines still use Google. It's, they, it's like basically a skin on top of Google. And what they do is they either um, <clears throat> mash like the, the tracking and the fucking... Uh, preference settings so it doesn't track your thing. Like if you want something like DuckDuckGo for argument's sake, where there's no algorithm. There we go. They basically remove Google's algorithm or try and dumb it down so that you get more natural results. With the AI systems, it's the same thing. You'll find eight out of ten of them are using an AI program you're trying to get away from. <laughs> They're just using it. I don't think Elon Musk is doing that. And I think that is the differentiator. Besides the fact that he owns the largest marketing platform on the planet. The guy sends out a tweet and everyone, including the Mayans, read it. And he just needs to say, Grok, go. <laughs> and the entire world will go. <laughs> and trust me, if Grok works proper... Which it will. I mean, this dude's fucking mastering reverse landing rockets and shit now. Chat GPT is probably going to end up just being dissolved into Microsoft's new AI project that Altman is heading up. That's what I was going to say is that in the long run, I see in the next three to five years, um, Microsoft will probably acquire it for a nominal value. For nothing. <laughs> for nothing. For nothing. It's... A lot of chat GPT's value, yes, it's in the product, etc., but it was also in the leadership because the leadership gave you an insight as far as where we're actually trying to take this thing. And that's what excited people. Remove the which excitement. Is which is analogous to most products because if you don't have a leader behind, why would you believe in it? Do you know what I mean? So from a consumer facts. perspective, 100%. like from a consumer perspective and a subscriber, I go, right, so where is this going to take me now? Is it going to still have the same utility? that I want to prescribe to, or are they going to be better versions? Exactly. Or at the very least, is it being created by someone that I, I get, that I kind of get, you know? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like you do, as much as some people try and paint tech dudes as like robotic, etc. there's personality in the roboticness, <laughs> you know? And Elon Musk is fucking case in point of it. There's a personality within that structured fucking engineering thought process. And I like my products to have that dude behind them. Someone with a dream. Because 
these days, it is way too easy to create a mediocre product. Way too easy to market a mediocre product and get people to sign up for it. Hence, there's fucking 10,000 versions of fucking everything. But me, I like the real Makoya. Okay. <clears throat> so shout out, Mr. Altman. Um, we'll see what happens, guys, but fuck. It, it was a wild weekend on that front. <laughs> so sticking with the tech motherfuckers, um, so you say Musk is landing some wild shit again. Musk is like flexing now. He's you got this to, thing locked. Uh, yeah, you have to. So this was a um, regulatory fight, flight. They could only go to a certain height and then they had to come back down. Um, I think he's got him back. I mean, yeah. if you look, if you, if you if you guys check out the videos, there's heaps of videos. There's 33 Raptor engines on this fucker. I mean, it's like a Raptor, like a Ford, like a F F uh, Ford Raptor. <laughs> <laughs> no, what about like a Raptor, like fucking a thousand? Wait, Raptor, right? So, so, so. <laughs> 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 so when space when SpaceX first came out, they started they they built an engine called the Raptor. Ah shit! Okay. Right, right. <laughs> so the nozzles at the bottom, there are thirty three of them. There's thirty three Raptor engines on there. Jesus Christ! Do you know more or less what's it's, the power it, of each engine? No, I have there's there's limited data. But on it there. must be like we, fucking we can, each we, engine we can, is like twenty thousand horsepower or something, yeah. dude. Bro, it is insane to move that much. Like mm. you have, everybody has to have a look at this because mm. this is next level stuff. It's not just setting a little spaceship up in the sky. This spaceship is humongous. And if you look, if, I don't know which episode it was, probably about seven episodes ago, mm. we discussed the enormous capacity of this space rocket. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> wow. I mean, because it's literally, he's getting to the stage where he can send a block of flats like a, a high-rise building to mars he's, he's almost there <laughs> maybe they should use elon to like help evacuate gaza because i'm sure he'd be able to like propel those buildings to just and find a new home like a new it a safer place it, it, it has been noted that elon might, might be an alien so you know <laughs> well look even his own people in israel don't like it man Benjamin Netanyahu was so pissed off with him for still wanting to allow the people of Gaza to have um, cell communication. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, he's, he's not biased. He thinks everybody should have access. He just thinks that um, you have to be diligent in your um, ability to execute on things, but understand that if you cut the snake, the head of a snake, does two grow back or does or or you mm. like wipe, wiping the snake out, you know? Mm. <clears throat> no, straight up, dude. Um, <clears throat> straight up. It's like, literally, like we said, extremist groups are like herpes. You know, they, they flare up from time to time. And if you don't leave them alone, it's, it's your whole face. Okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> let's look at these motherfucking rappers, dude, because I don't know what's going on. Okay. Snoop Dogg stopped smoking weed. And I'm still trying to see if this is a fucking... If he's fucking around here or if he's legit. But all the posts I've seen after he put up that, that, that post of... Um, I'm taking a break. Please give me my privacy kind of thing. Everything is put up after that. Snoop Dogg looks like a wreck. He... <laughs> he looks... He looks finished. He looks like... He looks like he's been held hostage by Hamas. Like he's got bags on his eyes... His dreads are looking rough. He's in weird rooms gambling. It's not even a casino. He's gambling in like a fucking town hall. What's going on with the dog? I have no context or recollection, but I, I would assume that the fact of the matter is, is, is which is odd, the amount of consumption. So once again, back to exercise and, and health, everything is okay in moderation. Everything is not okay in excess. So I think that um, he might have been medically uh, he, he assessed and, and, and attained to the fact that he cannot um, consume any. 
Okay, now guys, listen to this, okay? Snoop Dogg smoke smoky weed. Oh, fuck, Snoop Dogg smoke smoky weed. What the fuck? Snoop Dogg smoke smoky weed. He used to, he smoked every day. You know, he was always high. You know? Um, I know dudes that smoke every day. I love my ganja, okay? And dudes that smoke every day and, for example, stay high every day or the whole day, you may be smoking, again, depending on how you do it, but let's say you're smoking three to four joints a day, okay? Three to four joints a day. That is about, and we, if we're talking fatties, a one gram blunt, so you're smoking about four to five grams of weed a day, okay? That is a quarter ounce. An ounce is 28 grams. A quarter ounce is about seven, <clears throat> seven grams. Guess how much Snoop Dogg smokes? Uh, probably 10x that. Snoop Dogg smokes... The equivalent of half a pound of fucking weed a day, okay? That is between 75 to 150 joints a day. So let's think about this, right? He's no longer smoking weed. He's smoking his lungs and his throat. He's just cooking his lungs and throat the whole day. Okay? And on top of that, from what I've seen, Snoop has his tobacco in there. He mixes, from my knowledge. So now you're basically smoking 75 to 150 cigarettes a day. Since the day I was born, even since before I was born. Guys, Snoop Dogg's been smoking weed longer than I've been alive, okay? And he's been smoking 150 joints a day for, I, I'm 32, for more than 32 years. Think about, let's do some maths. The mere fact that Snoop Dogg still has an esophagus is a fucking miracle. It is a miracle. But I, straight up, I don't know how he's, look, he's the dog father. How do you function on so much weed, dude? <laughs> like, 10 joints a day is already like, holy shit, I'm slipping in and out of reality. Like, kind of, 100 joints. Like, 2 chains a little way got a fucking beautiful song. Safe by the chopper, chopper by the safe. No matter what they say, a hundred joints a day. I had them all pre rolled yesterday. <laughs> Dude, it's a song basically saying, I smoke a hundred joints a day. But it is a song. You know, it's a bit of exaggeration, you would think, but clearly it's based on Snoop Dogg's life. So I can only imagine that. Like you mentioned, I mean, Snoop's pushing 60. Dude's been smoking. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Snoop Dogg's probably been smoking weed for like 50 years. Like, guys, let's think about this, <laughs> right? <laughs> half a century of smoking weed. And again, we're, not, we're talking half a pound a day. Josh, where's the calculator? Okay. Get the calculator. Right. 50 years, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Times 365 days. Mm -hmm. Okay. 50 years times 365 days. Times 0.5. Yep. What number is that? 9,125. Okay. So Snoop Dogg has smoked... 10,000 pounds of marijuana in his life, right? <laughs> that's like a fucking eight, not even, that's an 18 wheeler truck of weed, okay? This fucking, uh, hey, dude, do you have a fucking eight, like, you know, try Optimus Prime? Snoop Dogg has smoked an entire Optimus Prime of weed in his entire life, okay? The mere fact that he can still remember his name is Snoop Dogg is special. So that's the context. I hope that whatever has happened is a, a little temporary scare. Like on some, hey, dude, shh. <laughs> you're kind of getting fired. He's like, all right, I, I, I. You know, he's going to just get back. Because he's been into like a whole health thing over the past couple of years, exercising, 
trying to balance. But how do you balance 150 joints a day, guys? How? Thoughts to press you, Snoop. We love you. <clears throat> we hope you are still able to live your life as you would like once the scare has gone. But we do hope that, I mean, with all, we all get scares. You know, I, I quit smoking well, four or five years back. Massive scare there was it took my father's life. So we all get scares. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do about it? And I think that's a big thing to see, but... We support you, dude, um, and uh, we'll we'll keep we'll keep it uh, lit whilst you you figure yourself out. <laughs> P Diddy. So, hey guys, if if you've been a like, I guess if you are, what would you call it, a millennial? What is the one before millennial? Gen X, I think. Correct. Gen X is before millennial. Gen X is to millennials. You know P. Diddy. Sean Puffy. You know, he's the guy that's always in in the background of the video, busy. There's no camera on him, but he's like shining. You know, he's that guy. And in 05, he brought us what at the time we all thought was, was a crazy, well, talent because we were like 14 and she was fucking hot, was Cassie. <laughs> Who sang her biggest song ever. I haven't heard anything else proper significant from her since. Um, Only You. Which she was singing to P. Diddy. Because they basically were dating since then. And it's been a known thing that P. Diddy and Cassie are together. But it was like a weird open relationship. Kind of like he's never going to put a ring on it. But when his bed's cold, she needs to pull up. And it seemed like dudes were comfortable with the relate with the arrangement, um, as it always does, until they're not. And if I'm not mistaken, these dudes split. I don't know, five years ish ago, maybe six, seven years ago. And hey, you know that's what happens when um, dude doesn't commit, and he splits. He doesn't give you anything. And your life all of a sudden changes because you had one huge hit that he basically owns because he produced it. And you're l kind of living off of his, his billions. Once they kick, you open your eyes and you kind of see what you've got left. And it's, it's a very sad reality for a lot of artists in the industry, especially young females. They get taken advantage of hard by producers. They have dreams. They have aspirations. Um, <clears throat> and usually there was a time where it was mainly like that. Maybe not so much now because, like, you pull out a camera. P. Diddy? Sorry, Diddy? What did you ask me to do, Diddy? I thought he had to sign a contract, Diddy. Why, why is your penis out, Diddy? You know, back then there was no cameras to do that. And unfortunately, <clears throat> you know, some girls get, get caught in the, the, it's a trap, basically. You become beholden to a man um, who claims he wants to give you freedom, but all he actually does is give you his credit card, which is not freedom. Because when he's no longer there, what do you have left? So, <clears throat> some horrible allegations have come out from Cassie against Pudity, basically accusing him of rape, human trafficking, drugging her, abusing her, controlling her. He basically R. Kelly'd her, but for, like, long, you know? <laughs> Pudity signed her, I think she was 17 or 18, so it's ah, it on the border. It's very, it was very close, but... He basically, it allegedly has been R. kelly her for 10, 12 years. She's finally come out to speak about it, laid some charges. Um, and look, it was, it was, um, it's heartbreaking, you know? Especially when shit always ends bad. Like, it was fine, it was fine. Now there's some shit coming. It's like, fuck, man. Um, 
you, you'd hope that kind of behavior either had stopped in the industry or wasn't being perpetuated by such large figures in the industry. But again, we're talking 10, 15 years back. It was a different game. I mean, this is pre-Me Too. And Me Too, no matter what you think about it, Me Too opened a can of worms on some fucking dogs. They brought some dogs out to the light. Um, which has kind of changed the public outlook and angle that we look at all of these. But of course, P. Diddy denies it. Um, <clears throat> he says it's a money grab. Probably because he's not giving her money, even though they were together for 12 years and he controlled her and, you know, but... Ladies, make sure you put some ring on it, please. Just to <laughs> please. So this is going to run through court. Um... Where's that prenup? Where's that prenup? <laughs> he didn't even give an opportunity to sign a prenup, dude. No. You got to protect your interests, especially in these industries, especially if you're getting in, re- in business relationships. You got to keep the two separate because one day, if shit hits the fan, at least you, you, you covered your ass. And you're not finding yourself out in the streets. Another heavy rap thing, dude. Oh, have you been following this Young Thug thing? Guys, Young Thug uh, did a lot of the shit, just lived this year lifestyle. And now he's in court just, having just, to explain all of the shit he's done to live this lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> so, just on the music thing, people have been uh, um, saying that People have been dying at Taylor Swift's concerts now and saying that it's attributed to ASAP Rocky's incident where people were saying time. Satan. Hey, dude. <laughs> so, Young Thug, right? Being a rapper and being... I'm a fan of... I like, I like some of his music. Being a rapper that... Um, his role model, his, you know, Eminem and Stan, Young Thug was Lil Wayne Stan. Like, Young Thug idolized Wayne, loved Wayne. You know, built his style around Wayne initially. When he first came out, it sounded like Wayne. His first album was uh, pushed to be released ahead of Lil Wayne's album at Cash Money at the time by Birdman, which caused a fucking huge thing, which is another story for another day. But now he is um, on some heavy RICO charges, hey, and he has been found uh, guilty, pretty much. RICO, that's racketeering fucking... <laughs> according, to, according to just a quick brief update, um, the latest updates on the rapper Young Thug's trial includes... Admissibility of lyrics. A judge has ruled that some of Young Thug's lyrics will be admissible in his upcoming trial. The decision is significant as it pertains to the RICO trial against members of the alleged gang YSL, of which Young Thug is a part of. Yeah. Trial developments is to explore whether Young Thug and several other individuals are involved in criminal street gang response, uh, responsible for crop, violent crimes. The witness list number was announced highlighting the extensive scope of the trial and the jury selection after was after nearly 10 months the jury panel has been selected for young thugs trial the long jury selection process underscores the complexity and the high profile nature of the case now think about this i mean anyone that listens to hip-hop knows what is actually being said in these songs (laughs) and it's been for the longest time right you know, it's one of those, there's a reason, um, who was it that had the line? Um, basically saying, all these rappers these days are on Instagram busy snitching on themselves. Because they're on Instagram live holding fucking AKs, <laughs> talking about this. And it's only a matter of time <laughs> until, you know, the inevitable happens. But when it comes to music... It's something called artistic expression. And this allows you to say some wild shit, you know? This allows you to say, I mean, the <clears throat> the um, weirdest punchline of the year comes from Kendrick Lamar. Um, 
I forget the chick that he features in the song Purple Hearts, where she says, it ain't love if you judge me from a past. It ain't love if you never eat my ass. It ain't love and love, you know? <laughs> and that's hip hop. So little way, you know how he raps. He fucking bends. He's one of the goats, straight up. One of the goats. Like that guy's punchlines will twist your head proper. But he was one of the first, like, um, what we bling rappers that started hooking up proper affiliation amongst um, your Crips uh, or your Bloods. Let me put it that way. And he brought the celeb like a larger celebration of gang culture by non gangsters in hip hop. He popularized that. More. Now, I'm not saying he's not affiliated, but I'm not saying that he is. There's gray lines here, okay? <laughs> There's affiliation, there's association, it's, it's weird. So you'll find that after Lil Wayne's generation, there was a generation of rappers that came up that were rapping about shooting dudes, killing dudes, fucking dudes, wives, fucking... Um, you know, <laughs> so a whole lot of shit. I shot your friend there. I'll meet you at the corner and I'll gut you like a fish. All of that type of shit. But these were a bunch of dudes that have never done nothing. And because they hadn't done anything, they, I guess, felt strong enough to say it. Because, okay, I'll try to prove it, kind of. Like, you, there's nothing to prove. It's a song. But the issue happens is when some people start to blur these realities. And Young Thug, another Young Money rapper, uh, Cash Money rapper, Gunner, were, again, <clears throat> got deeply affiliated, came up just like Takashi69, got affiliated, and dudes got wrapped up in that crew, and you were spending way too much time, way too much... <laughs> You 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 would you were part of the gang basically, and in your songs you're saying we're part of the gang. And when charges are eventually leveled, as what happened in this case, they have now actually gone to the lyrics, and have been like, wait, hold on. And there are songs where the lyric, like they're taking the lyric, and they're like admitting this in court. But the worst part about it is the lyric matches the act. You know what I'm saying? So it's not even grasping at straws. It's like, uh, do, do you have some examples of, of some of the lyrics there? It's, <laughs> dude. Uh, I don't. I don't. But it does say that this trial is significantly leading proceeding in the music and entertainment industry, particularly because of the concerning use of the art, artist's lyrics yeah. as evidence in a crime case. 100%, dude. I mean, it reminds me of um, and maybe I'll be nice and put a link in the description. Key and Peel had this bit, dude. <laughs> Where they literally got this rapper, and he's, he's, he's in for interrogation. And he's in the interrogation room, and he's looking all badass and what. And there's these two cops. And I think the one cop is kind of on his side, and the other cop is not. And then they're asking him questions like, so where were you on the 15th of October, um, 7 p.m.? And then he's like, he comes, he comes forward to the mic like, I can't remember, you know, I might have been outside, my hammy gun. And then the cop has a tape recorder there and he plays a tape and it's the, the dude's song. And he's like, yeah, 7 p.m. on the 15th October with a knife and neck of the guy. You're like, that he's explaining the crime that they accuse. It's like, but dude, like in the song, you say you would. I ain't doing. And then they play another part of the song, and he's he's describing how he killed the person, making sure that he says the guy's full fucking name and middle name. It's an hilarious skit, but literally that has come to life. Let me know. Do you think this is fair? Um, again, artistic expression, freedom of speech. 
But are you free from the consequences? Let us know in the comments. Innocence and so proven guilty. <clears throat> I plead the fifth. And then they play your debut album, dude, where you just fucking money, 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 uh, 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 money, money, dude. Like, <laughs> you can't, what are you going to do? But fuck, man, he might, he's going away for a while, huh? Like, this is a, a, this is, you know, and Young Thug's not fucking 6'9". He's not, they snitching and shit. Gunner is, is trying to hook up deals and stuff. But Young Thug is, 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 Oh, Daga. Hey, man. And he's got like 15, he's got like 15 children, dude. It's. Mm. <laughs> Everybody's a bastard, right? <laughs> Fuck, man. What a waste. I, what a waste. I just want to touch on this. The other thing that I wanted to, that wasn't in the docket described earlier on. Um, but since the Israeli and Gaza thing, Came up quickly. There was something that was happening behind the scenes. Wait, 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 (coughs) Joshua. Yeah. Are you bringing up Israel and and Hamas? Are you? Wait, wait. Let me just open my folder quick. Hold on. I just need my book. Wait, wait. Don't don't, don't open. I need the Torah. It's gonna fucking freeze. No, I need the Torah. The Torah (laughs) and the the Book of the Thousand Valleys. Wait. Okay. It's it's gonna shut down your computer because you have too much information. I think uh, the IDF might come look for tunnels here. They might yeah, come start exactly. excavating in my yard, looking for tunnels and saying, Gaza's, they, they fucking, Hamas is using my house as cover. <laughs> <laughs> there was an interesting thing that came about that I don't think had, had enough um, media coverage, but negotiations had begun among the WHO members of state um, on a global record of pandemic prevention, preparedness, and response. The discussions were part of the intergovernmental negotiation body, the IMB, which includes 194 countries, are based on the zero draft and aim to protect nations and communities from future pandemic emergencies. The next IMB meeting to continue the negotiations is scheduled for next year, April, with the goal of developing the first draft. The effort reflects a global consensus on on the need to work collaboratively to prevent the effective response to global pandemic threats. And the final draft is expected to be presented at the 77th uh, World uh, WHO in 2024. Simultaneously, governments are discussing over 300 amendments to the international health regulations to enhance global health safety and equity in response to public health emergencies. These amendments are aligned with Record negotiations and will also be presented to WHO with in 2004, aiming to provide a comprehensive set of global health agreements. Now, the consensus behind these agreements is, is, is in fact that from the right side, they're saying that um, they're saying that this amendment will basically be negligible. And if there's a, a virus and if there's a vaccine in inverted commas, You'll have to take it regardless. You'll have zero choice whether or not to take it. And from the left side, they don't. There's, there's no. There's no chat about it. So it'd be, be interesting development to focus on for the next year. See what happens with this. Just oh, straight up, about. something to keep an eye on. Remember, guys, you don't want to get caught by surprise by anything. At the very least, the next pandemic, because we have, we've been lucky enough. That it's happened whilst we're alive, you know. Thoughts and prayers for everyone that that passed. But uh, fool me once, shame on you, type thing. Fool me twice. So keep a heads up, um, <clears throat> especially around some of the weird medical shit they're going to try and push through, because generally what happens is by the time we get a whiff of it, it's too late. The signatures, the fucking the inks already drying on the paper. They're already shagging fucking hookers in the Middle East, dude. So well, this is what this, this is what I just wanted to touch on, just to keep your um, even if nothing happens of it, you are aware that something's going on in the background, mm. and that fundamentally, as a human, you should always put your freedom of choice before anything else. Mm. And just understand that <clears throat> these people, so these people that are working on this response in the background, this is their purpose 
in life. Their purpose in life is to protect us from another pandemic, right? How do you protect people from another pandemic? By creating a pandemic. I'm not saying that. Anyways, thank you all so much for joining us. It's been an amazing show. Um, <clears throat> we love you all in Palestine. People of Gaza, thoughts and prayers. Um, the IDF, you guys are revolting. Um, uh, the unfortunate thing is you have proven all the doubters right once again. It just took a matter of time. Um, <clears throat> thank you all. Beautiful show. If you liked him, like him. If you haven't as yet, subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you're notified whenever we drop new content. And we shall see you in the next one. Have a great week.